And of course, if I'm gonna do a video on nitrogen, I have to mention liquid nitrogen. This stuff is really, really amazing, and I'm lucky that my local air gas will sell it to me. Uh, I have a proper doer to hold it in, and that's all they require. So first, let's go over physical properties. Liquid nitrogen, as you probably know, is very, very cold. It's at 77 Kelvin, or negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is astonishingly cold. Uh, the Kelvin scale, if you're unfamiliar with it, uh, zero is absolute zero. You cannot get any colder than that temperature. So this liquid is only 77 degrees above the coldest possible temperature. So it's actually, it's astonishing to me that you can have a liquid that cold that's just right in front of you. Uh, it's a little bit lighter than water. Uh, it's got a density of 0.8 grams per milliliter and water is one. So it's 80% as dense as water. And finally, it's got a huge expansion ratio. The liquid, when it boils into a gas, expands tremendously. And in fact, one liter of liquid nitrogen, if it all boils off, will expand into 694 liters of nitrogen gas. So you can imagine if that, that's in a sealed container, that could create insane pressures. And so, in fact, you might have noticed that uh, this just has a foam plug on top of it, which is really just sitting on top of it. It's not uh, in there at all. Um, and that's because you cannot store liquid nitrogen in a sealed container uh, at room temperature. And now that's in contrast to something like propane. Propane is a gas that when you uh, compress it, it can be liquefied. So if you pick up a propane cylinder and, and shake it, you can hear liquid sloshing around. That's liquid propane. And it's a liquid because it's under pressure. This nitrogen is a liquid because it's cold and you cannot put it under enough pressure to turn it into a liquid at room temperature. So anything that's designed to store liquid nitrogen is never sealed. This is just an open uh, container. And even the, the giant ones, though, we have 160 liter doers at work, and those have a relief valve that's constantly hissing and letting out nitrogen. And I mean, it may seem wasteful, but that's just what you have to do. You cannot store it in a sealed container. So if you take a look down into the doer, you can see that the nitrogen is colorless. Uh, it looks just like water and it is boiling, as I said, because it's always gonna be uh, absorbing some heat despite how insulating this container is. So it looks just like boiling water. It's even um, not very viscous. So it moves around a lot like water does. And you notice when you put it in a container to start, it just boils like crazy because it has to cool the container down first. Uh, but as it cools the container down, you know, then the boiling is going to slow down quite a bit. So one of the questions I often ask when doing demonstrations of this is what is all of this uh, steam or smoke that's coming off of it? And uh, some of the younger kids will say, well, it's nitrogen, right? And it makes sense because this is liquid nitrogen. So when it boils, it turns into a gas and hey, that looks like a gas. Uh, but that's actually not correct. Um, what it is, is it's literally a cloud. The nitrogen is so cold that when it boils off, it's still very cold, but it is a, is a gas now. And that cold gas condenses water out of the air. So you get little tiny water droplets and that is what a cloud is. Now, something you may have noticed when I was pouring this into the small doer is uh, that it was skating around on the table. And if you didn't notice that, let's try it again and just take a look at what the liquid does. See how it kind of, it flies around, it skates away, uh, it zips around like it's got no friction. And that's a really cool effect. Um, that's something called the Leidenfrost effect. So the Leidenfrost effect happens when a very uh, cold liquid touches a very hot surface.
So there's one interesting consequence of the Leidenfrost effect, and it's that you can do something that you really wouldn't think should be possible, but you can actually touch liquid nitrogen. Briefly. So you notice I'm, I'm really quick about it. <laughs> you can't leave your hand in there. It's that cushion of gas between the liquid and the hot surface, in this case my hand, that protects it. So it really just feels like um, putting your hand in, the, in a freezer. You know, it's very, very cold, but it's not that bad. Um, you just gotta be quick about it. So now let's do a couple of little experiments with this. And I, I'm not gonna do a ton of different things here just because uh, there's so many different things you can do with liquid nitrogen and it's gonna make this video tremendously long. Um, but the first one I wanna do is uh, actually my favorite um, because I think a lot of people don't know about it either. And it has to do with LEDs. So I've got a uh, what's called a yellow LED here. I mean, it kinda looks like orange to me, but they call it yellow, so we'll go with that. Um, so you see if I shine on the table, that's the color of it. Uh, so this a really neat effect is that uh, when you cool uh, such an LED in liquid nitrogen, take a look at what happens. The color actually completely changes and now we have a green LED. Like again, let's put it on the table. That's totally green. And that's an amazing effect. And what's really neat too is, that, you know, once this thing heats back up again, it slowly changes back to being an orange LED. So now we're more yellow, and as it warms up, we get to be a bit more orange. And so this is totally repeatable. And let me do it again. I'll turn the lights off as well for this one. All right, so again, here's my orange slash yellow LED. Cool that down on the nitrogen. Should go a bit faster because it's already cold. Now we get green. And notice, see if I leave it in for too long, it really dims down quite a bit. Um, and that turns out that that's because these green LEDs, they require a bit more voltage than an, an orange LED does. So this not only optically turns from one color to the other, it's electrically, I mean, it needs more voltage when it's cold. So it really does become a green LED. Uh, and that's just really cool. Something else you might notice is I'm, I'm careful about how I dip this because I don't want to dip the battery in the nitrogen um, because you know batteries work off of chemistry and chemistry basically stops at liquid nitrogen temperatures. So if you put the whole thing in there, it just shuts off because the battery just stops working. Normally, you want to keep liquid nitrogen in very well insulating containers so it doesn't evaporate. But what happens if you put it in a not insulating container uh, like metal? Um, so that's just a, obviously a cut off soda can. So a very thin metal. Let's try that. See, you really can see the, uh, the boiling effect there as it cooled it down. So that cools down super quick, obviously, because it's super thin. Um, so now if we take this container and pick it up and tilt it, We'll see if you can see what happens. So let's, let's take a look at the, the corner of this soda can and see if you notice anything going on. Maybe I'll move it back a little bit so you can see what happens on the table. See that? There's, there's a liquid dripping off of the corner. And this is not leaking out of the can. I haven't tilted it so much that it's you know, losing nitrogen. But there is a, a liquid that's actually dripping Let's see if I can maybe get a better angle. So see the liquid that's dripping off of it? And it's acting just like nitrogen is. I mean, it's, it's skating around on the surface. Uh, it, doesn't, uh, stay, it doesn't stick around. It evaporates pretty quickly. So what do you think that might be? So it's not water, right? Because this is so cold that water would just freeze. And it is. You see it's forming um, frost on the outside. So it's not that. Um, so what it actually is is liquid oxygen. So liquid oxygen has a boiling point that is just a bit above liquid nitrogen. Uh, remember I said liquid nitrogen is negative 320 Fahrenheit. Oxygen is negative 297.3 Fahrenheit. So it's about 23 degrees uh, warmer. So that condenses straight out of the air first. Um, so the, the air is actually condensing on the outside of this can, which is, is pretty amazing. And I imagine it's not so totally pure. I mean, there's probably a little bit of other stuff mixed in, but I, it's mostly oxygen. 
And you can use liquid oxygen for all kinds of other things which are equally as amazing as liquid nitrogen. And again, that would make this video incredibly long, so we're gonna save that for a future video, perhaps the next in the series. So here's another neat demonstration of the ideal gas law, actually. So I'm gonna take a balloon and blow that up. So now I have a balloon that's full of air. But let's dispense some into a beaker and you'll get to see some more uh, boiling, which is always fun. That's pretty cool because it's glass, right? So you can actually see the boiling. So let's see what happens if we pour some liquid nitrogen onto our balloon here. And hopefully you'll be able to see it because I've got to try to orient myself <laughs> the right way. But here we go. Yeah, look at that. So it shrinks. And if you're familiar with the ideal gas law, it's uh, PV equals NRT. So if one side uh, changes, the other side has to change with it. So if we decrease the temperature, the T goes down, that means the V has to go down too. So the volume decreases as the temperature does. Now, the most impressive part of this demonstration, I think, is what happens to the balloon afterwards. But uh, check it out, you might be able to see some liquid sloshing around inside there. But we put this back on the table, and uh, as it warms back up, it expands again. <laughs> and kind of amazingly, you, I, I didn't believe this the first time it happened, but uh, now this balloon is totally fine. It's, <laughs> it's back to being a regular balloon. And it's astonishing to me that latex can survive uh, such temperature changes like that. You know, something so common it can actually withstand it. And I think that's pretty funny. So we're gonna try this one more time and see if you can see it better. So I mentioned uh, liquid before. So, you know, because we're cooling down this bag of air with liquid nitrogen, um, since air is mostly nitrogen, we should be able to liquefy the gas that's inside of the balloon. So you, it's kind of hard to see sometimes, but there's actually liquid that's sloshing around inside this balloon here. So that's our, our liquefied air. You hear how, how, how hard it is. I mean, it's totally frozen. <laughs> But I mean, once it thaws, it's just fine. I, I've reused the same balloon for this demo uh, five or six times before, and it's, it comes back every time. So if you have liquid nitrogen, of course, you gotta freeze and chatter stuff. So I like to do flowers a lot because they're very fun and easy to do. So uh, what we do is just stick them in there and see what happens. And it actually goes very, very quickly because the petals on the flowers are so thin, so they freeze almost instantly. Now we've got a nice, pretty cold flower. <laughs> Petals sound like glass. Here, I'll do one more. Freezes pretty much immediately. <laughs> nice. The downside of that one, of course, is that now it's a huge mess. I think the best thing to shatter, though, is one of these. It's a racquetball. So they are very bouncy, as you might know. It's made of some kind of rubber. But what happens if we bring that down to liquid nitrogen temperatures? Now this is going to take a bit longer to freeze because it's much thicker than a flower petal is. So we'll give that a minute to, to freeze. And, and you can see it floats too, so I gotta kind of like roll it around and poke it down into the nitrogen every now and then. 
And the way that you know these things are frozen is once it stops boiling, because uh, right now it's obviously super hot according to the nitrogen, so it's gonna keep on boiling. But when the boiling slows down, then we know that our, our rubber is actually frozen all the way. All right, we got our cold racket ball. Now let's see how well this one bounces. <laughs> Not very. <laughs> I love the sound it makes too. So I don't know if you know this, but racket balls are hollow. So I think that that pop is just from all the, the air escaping or something. But it's like, it's, <laughs> it's super hard now. I mean, I can't, I can't bend it at all. So here's all the pieces I was able to find. <laughs> uh, but now that it's had a few minutes to warm up a bit, I mean, you see it's still super cold because it's got all this frost on it, but I can actually touch it now. And what's crazy is, you know, when it was frozen, it was rock hard. I couldn't bend it at all. But now that it's warm again, it's back to being normal rubber. Very cold rubber and useless as of all, but still rubbery. And I think that's pretty cool that it can recover its properties.